Hi, my name is Gary Harrison. Let's talk about a little bit about what I'm about on this channel. You see, I've been involved in the music business and entertainment industry and the medium about over 30 years. I won't get into age and all. But what's fun about it is all the experiences I've made, the travels that I've made, the fact that being a migrant kid coming from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, where I was born, and then becoming an American citizen, a Jamaican American. So it's very interesting to see all the views on the migrant situation in America. Being the fact that I migrated to another country myself, living in Europe. Now, that was serendipity, of course. And the other one was the serendipitous moves my parents made going to America. Yeah, I guess they wanted to have the dream of the great American pie, which for some reason was, I thought of it as a delusion until I discovered the American entertainment industry. So as long as I know, um, my mom said that I had an affinity for, for movement, dance, rhythm. She said when the music would come on as a, as a young baby, one, I would guess that she said I would immediately start moving, feet would go. And then she would notice as I progressed two to three that I would be imitating what I would see, emulate, basically. She didn't understand how I was doing that. But you know, I don't remember none of it. But it did appear to me that I really enjoyed movement very early. And I saw the reaction of my parents when I did it. They were very happy. So I just kept on doing it because it made people happy, I guess. So I recall the early stages when we uh, finally traveled to or migrated to, to America. And I remember that first couple of days in Brooklyn somehow vividly in my memory. It was sunny and a uh, new place, living space, you know, coming from country boy to now living in Brooklyn. And one of the things that uh, I remember, recall, some of the images I remember was hearing languages like Spanish and then and then I saw the first uh, thing that I remember, first memory of what uh, Shogun is, was, was I saw something from a movie called Ro Roustabout from Elvis Presley. I remember the motorcycle, him, him riding on the motorcycle. I remember some scenes or one scene where he was singing and people were reacting. He was, I think he was even singing in the beginning when he was riding that motorcycle. can't remember right now. But I said, wow, you singing Lady Scream. That was unusual, you know. It was new to me to see that. But anyway, that stuck out as a memory. And another thing that stuck out as a memory is that my father provided us with some music to listen to, you know, some American artists that I, I never heard of. And Otis Redding, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, James Brown, Live at the Apollo, uh, the Shirelles, you know, these albums. He just gave it to us, I guess, because he didn't want us to touch his stereo system or go into his record collection. So he introduced us to these records. We had our own little record stereo system and we played it on that. And I really studied that, you know, those records. I was so intrigued because it was the only record that we had. I was like six or five, I don't remember. But I think at least five had all these records from him and then these records we had and I listened to them so that was my first impression about American soul African American artists you know, great ones as I discovered more as I got older these were the greats you know so I appreciated that having that kind of history in it, and it went a long way with me later and then the fusion of the Caribbean music you know reggae music 
you know, I, I had all that upbringing hearing that, you know, because he would bring home records every time on the weekends coming home from work. And, you know, we shared in that spirit of uh, listening to music, engaging on the weekends, and dancing around the house, entertaining for my uncle, then they would come over, my aunt, and, you know, he would give us a half a dollar for dancing or, or myself. You know, so it was fun. So I always had this affinity for dance and, and music, you know. I guess it was a pastime of my father and, and my mom, so they really enjoyed that. And, and it was the way, you know, you really stress after a working week, I believe. And uh, so I grew up with this uh, love for, for expression in, in, in the music. You know, I didn't become an engineer or a doctor. By, by choice, because I, I felt this is something I could do well and express myself. So it was a perpetuating development slowly, and then eventually I, I took my first step dance lessons, uh, tap dance lessons in, say, in America. Over here they say step dance in Germany. So I did that very early at six, seven years old. Started, you know, this is gonna be a full dance training. Until that uh, somehow got halted because I was discouraged from my uncle who, who who kind of showed his homophobic vibes at the time and, and explained to me if I wear that leotard, I might just turn into a sissy. So I guess at seven, I took my uncle's notion of angst, if you can say it like that, that's fear in German. And I was a little bit inundated by what he said at the time, looking back at that. So it's very important that children, whenever they hear something a little bit disparaging, even if they don't understand it, to tell their parents. Well, my mom said that she, she said that's one of the reasons why I stopped doing it because he kind of like propagated that notion to me that I would be basically a sissy, I'll become sissified. And what was so funny is that I ended up wearing those leotards a lot later from my choice and nothing ever happened to me I didn't become sissified or whatever he tried to say back then but I ended up meeting many people who were gay in the music business and it never bothered me so you would probably trip out to know that that happened to me I think you know them coming to New York at the time and I didn't know the scene I was very young they probably saw a lot of things that kind of was disconcerting to them as being West Indian men. And most of those men are unfortunately are very homophobic, you know, because of the times where they grew up. You can't change anything about their way of learning and their culture. So many of those kind of men grew up seeing things different as being somehow objecting them to something that their Christian beliefs would not stand. Basically what I'm saying is that they were not progressive in these of acceptance, progressive in their acceptance. That's it. So I won't say anything more about that. But I wasn't like that. I was more progressive. I became even more ostentatious than I thought, you know, watching people like Michael and and Prince and, and looking back at how James Brown would also present himself. I love the, the, the dynamic of presenting one as themselves and how they, one should express themselves in the medium of entertainment. So I didn't have a problem with that. In, in fact, coming to Europe, I exploited that even more. Experimenting and, and trying to put myself out there as an artist, you know, and I've kind of taken it down 
uh, uh, digressed a lot on a lot of things that I was doing back then. But, you know, sometimes you want to, as Prince would say, exploit the youth side of you and be daring and taking chances, as he would say, life. Life is death without adventure. And adventure only comes to those who are willing to take chances and be daring. Something to that effect, he said anyway. Look it up. It's a great speech. So life basically can take you on a journey in everything that you decide to do. You just have to give yourself reassurances. Your total focus will be just that. So I didn't intend to get into show business or the entertainment media, whatever you want to call it. It's something that attracted me very early. Like there are people who decide to be doctors or lawyers. I didn't have the affinity for those things or to be those things, but I knew that I could entertain the world if I was given a chance. So instead of waiting for those chances, I took the chance. And that I will share in the upcoming episodes. About the story of, of my being. <laughs> 